I, I had written a book called Why Worship. And the reason why I wrote it, and I'm going to tell you guys, when when God first told me I was going to write a book, I thought it was going to be like a poetry book or something because I, I love poetry. I'm like, and he said, no, you're going to write about worship. I'm like, what, God, what if I'm not able to do it? I'm not qualified to write about worship. And he said, uh, yes, you are. I, I, I've qualified you because worship is a very intimate thing. It's between you and God, and your worship is not going to look like anyone else's. Because you ha if you have a personal relationship with God, then your worship, you and him, is worship unto him. And so um, I, wanna, I wanted to make sure I said that because I, I want you to know that if you make worship uh, your lifestyle, it's going to affect everything else. And so, um, and let me just say, the, the word of God even says the enemy doesn't want you to have a life that's good or well or to, to be doing well. He actually fights against you having that. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to share it right here. John 10 and 10 says the thief cometh not, uh, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But, but this is the, the good part of the scripture. I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so I love that the word of God doesn't leave you hanging out there. Just dangling like you hear the beginning of that so it sounds so bad like oh he's coming to kill still and destroy me but he says no the end of that is a good the good news a promise he says I come to give you life and give it more abundantly I love that God doesn't just say the bad part oh if you've been abused if you've had addictions if you if you have had trauma that's the end of the story no he says I have a promise on the end of that you can have life and you can have it more abundantly so, so that's the full scripture. It's, he tells you and he warns you of what it's like when you're, if you're out there and you're not covered. But then he said, but I, but I have this for you over here. You don't have to take that first part. I'm just warning you that it's out there and it, it's, the enemy's going to try to attack your peace. He's going to try to steal your joy. He's going to try to distract you from your purpose of what you're supposed to be doing. Because that's what he does. He doesn't want you to have a life of living well and having abundance. And so with that being said, you have to know, okay, I'd rather have the latter part of that promise, of that, that scripture that he said. So that's his mission literally in life, to try to keep you from living well. But um, there's so many people that are seeking and searching for more. And I, I never even realized that until uh, one part of my journey, and I'll just share that I, and this is not in my notes, so I'm getting a little off my notes, but I feel like I should share this right here. Uh, it's funny that I'm speaking on wellness because I didn't know that this was gonna be a part, me being a mental health life coach, I didn't know this was gonna be a part of my journey until Sherry saw it in me. She saw it in me, I was doing my, I met her actually through music and um, she, she just said, have you ever thought about, because I knew I was kind of in transition of God doing something different and new in my life. And she said, have you ever thought about being a life coach? And it was like something like leaped in my belly, like, oh, you know, and I connected with that word. And God was like, that's the next link to what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be doing, um, you know, mental health coaching. And so you know, I start studying and getting my certification for it, but it's, it's even deeper than that. So if you don't know like what you're supposed to be doing, you can really seek God for what is the next steps in your life. But I want to um, just encourage you today to begin to line your life up with what's going to let you have your overall wellness in your life. So um, let me first tell you the definition. This is the first definition that I found for wellness. Wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental health outcomes. So that instead of just surviving, you're thriving. So let me add to that. I'm adding my own little piece of that. 
I, I want to add in the spiritual aspect of that because that's very true for wellness. That is one part of it. But you want to also have a, your spiritual health in there as well. Um, your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being is all linked. It's all linked together. And so what are you allowing to come into your life? What are you engaging in? What are you thinking about? What are you focusing your energy on? Because if you're focusing all your energy on something negative, or that's what's gonna manifest in your life. If you're if you're around all these things bad and or someone who's just talking down on you, or you have all these negative things, have you ever noticed you could be having a good day <laughs> and, and and then you're around all this negativity or uh, you know, a toxic relationship or you're just focused on something you're focused on a bad relationship something bad then that's what's gonna start manifesting in your life that's what's really gonna start like you know and and then it it leads into other things where it affects your health it affects your your mind your rest you know you can't get sleep you're tossing and it affects everything so when I say it's linked it literally is linked if there's something in your spirit that's bothering you it's going to really affect everything mm -hmm. um, about your your well being, mm -hmm. and so what are you allowing to get into your spirit and manifest? It's it's important on what you have your mind on. What are you nur nurturing in your spirit? And so, are you speaking life to yourself, or are you speaking death? Because our our words have power. Our words literally do have power. It says it that life and death can be in is in is in your your tongue is in what you're speaking out into the atmosphere. So I want to uh, really let you know that that is it important what you keep speaking to yourself. Even if you have to get some scriptures, like I was singing about, fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Psalms one thirty nine and fourteen. Put that up on your mirror. Read that. Say. When someone may be talking about you, you're nothing. You ain't going to be a 139. And that's a, a the chapter, chapter is 139 and it's verse 14. If you have, even if you are uh, at, in a moment where you're in a dark, with someone who's in a dark place, let me just say that, the light can be in you. And if you keep repeating what God has said about you to, to just fight against the negativity that's coming, it will sustain you and help you get out of that situation to where you you that you don't have to be overcome by that negativity and that negative thought that is trying to, to tear you down. Let me just say that. And so um, I have this, it's important to know the difference in between health and wellness as well. Okay, so health, let me give you a definition of health. Um, health is the state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity so did you, did you get that can you say that again sure I'm sure to fast as you talk. oh sorry sorry and i know i'm trying to send her these notes health is the state uh -huh. of complete physical okay. mental and okay. social well-being and it's not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So what that says to me is you could you could um, be healthy in your body, no disease. I don't have cancer. I don't have this. I don't have any infirmity. But you could be getting beat down or you could be mentally and you could still not be healthy. Because it said it's not just the absence of disease or infirmity. You could literally in your mind be getting um, in depression or you, so you literally, that that's also not healthy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not healthy for you. So mm -hmm. that is something to remember. Now, this is the other definition that I thought was very good that I found for wellness. It says, wellness is an active process through which people, and I'll read this again, become aware become aware of and make choices toward a more successful existence. 
Wellness is an active process through which people become aware of and make choices toward a more successful existence. So what that says to me is that in order to be well, it's when you, first of all, you become aware that you're not well or you need to be more well, and then you start making different choices. If you don't like where you're at, you just start, you, you begin to say, okay, I need to do something to change my situation or, you know, you become aware of it and then you make choices toward getting to that more successful existence and that more successful place. And so that that's what it says to me. If you're wanting a better life, you're going to begin searching, researching and getting to that place. And so the spiritual wellness, when I had defined that, I defined that as ex- and, and there's all these definitions about, uh, maybe I can send them to Lori so you guys won't have to, um, feel like you have to write all this, but spiritual wellness is defined as expanding a sense of purpose and meaning in your life. And that's a simple one. It's expanding? Expanding a sense of purpose and meaning in your life. And you find that through God. And, and it's a part of a, it's a part of your process on your journey to finding that. I know for me, when I was just like, searching like, oh God, I don't know, you know, what am I gonna do next? It was a part of me just really surrendering my life to him and then also being open to where he was gonna lead me. And guess what? He began leading me down that way. He, been, he began closing the doors of where I wasn't supposed to be and opening the doors. I didn't know exactly where I was gonna be. But guess what? I had desires of my heart of what I wanted to do. I said, God, I want to do my music. I want to be able to do that for a living. I mean, I remember saying these things and praying these things and and thinking, oh, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but, you know, let me just go on and do this in the meantime. And God literally began to open the doors for me to do that. And now that is actually what I, what I do, part of what I do for a living. So he knows what, if you have a desire, like, God, I want to open this daycare. God, I want to um, start this business. I want to, I want to, um, you know, I want, I want to be able to do this. He knows that, and and there, but there's a process to getting to that, because guess what? If you don't line yourself up to get that, He loves you so much that He won't give you that so that you will destroy it. He'd be like, let me work on this. A process. Let me work on. They need to get. They need to be built up over here first. They need to learn how to do this first so they won't lose everything. So he he builds you up and 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 to getting to that place. But guess what? He still remembers what your desire is, and he'll allow you to be able to. I remember on getting to the journey, he allowed me to work at a um, a nursing home and just sing music to the residents, and that was so rewarding to me. I love doing that, and it was a part of. I was like, I was thinking, Wow, God, I'm actually doing it. I'm getting a you know part of my job. I get to play to people and get. But that wasn't the end of it. That was like the beginning of him allowing me to do it and getting me prepared for what, what I'm doing now. So just be encouraged on that. If there's something you, you're wanting to do and it doesn't feel like, man, man, I don't, right now I don't see myself doing that or seems like years away, you never know what God can do. And what took people five and ter- 10 years to do, God can make it happen in like a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Four or five months, you're like, whoa, whoa, you know. He can send someone to bless you. He can send someone to open a door in, and you look around and you're like, wow, this year, this time last year, I was wanting this and now I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So be encouraged that it, it may even look like far away or unbelievable, but you just never know what God can do. Once you, 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 begin to live a life of worship and you line yourself up and you're getting everything well because God wants you to live in abundance but he wants you to be well doing it right he wants us to be whole doing it <laughs> so um I'm gonna give you guys a, a few tips it's, it's just five tips I want to give you guys and um I want to start number one <laughs> So, and I appreciate the note takers. <laughs> if I'm going too quick, I'll, I'll have to take, like, take screenshots. And, and you know, if, if there's parts you guys want, you can, you know, take screenshots. We can just share each other's notes wherever she didn't get them. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, I'm number, take short no, yeah. <laughs> number one, start 
Start with God. Start with God. That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. You can never go wrong with starting with God first. Never go wrong. Make him first. Make him the center. And you will be amazed how he will line everything up. Everything will fall into place when you make him first, when you put him first. Because it may seem like, oh, God, I don't know how it's going to work out. He'll work it out for your good. Even if sometimes, like, even when we mess up and bumble it, mm -hmm. he can work that out for our good. And, and like, oh, okay, wow, well, you know how that got made into, you know, even it's like the potter on a wheel and, and we're the clay. And when we get off, he can just like, oh, let me add a little water, spin that again. Mm -hmm. and, you know, remake you back up. And so so it's that's the beautiful thing about our creator. He created us so he knows how to make us whole. It says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So um, right here, I'm going to read a little part from... Um, my book because I did write a chapter in here called Worship to Wholeness. And um, when I was thinking about being made whole, and I'm just going to read, it's like just one little paragraph of it. It says, uh, the reason it is sometimes hard for us to worship and allow God to make us whole is because we are broken. We're all broken. With flaws and missing parts to our souls, we often can't seem to get to the place of true worship. While our lives are shattered and scattered, so to speak, it is only by God's grace that we find our way there. I am not saying that God will not meet us where we are, because he will, um, and even allow us to become, uh, and even allow us to come into his presence while our lives are messed up. But that is why we are so blessed to have God's mercy and his grace. However, to be able to live a lifestyle of worship and truly be free and move to a deeper and greater level, it takes surrender and sacrifice to allow God to work on us and to make us whole again. And so um, when I was thinking about that, I said, you know, God, you're so good to us because even when we're messed up, when we've done all these different things, he still loves us. He created us. He made us. He has a great purpose for us. And so he's like, I'm going to, I'm coming after you. I have, I'm coming after you. I have open arms. We just have to surrender and get, get back to that place where we're like, okay, okay, God, let, let me go and, and, and get into your arms and and surrender and allow you to do the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so um, I put in here also in my notes, <laughs> um, when we are broken, who better to make us whole again than our creator? And I, I have a song called Broken Things. That's one of the songs I was gonna do, but I, I did beautiful because it's more upbeat. But um, the song Broken Thing reminds us of that, that God is close to the brokenhearted. And when we're broken, he's wanting to make us whole again. And that song, God kind of, he works with me in different ways. He gives me songs in, in, in sometimes in just weird settings to me. But that particular song, I was looking on the internet and I saw the, the broken pottery, the um, Japanese broken art. Uh, Kensukuri art, or uh, um, it's, there's two different names for it. Uh, Kensuki, I think, is also another way it's called, but it's broken uh, vases. And when they, um, and I didn't bring my music book, I have a printout of it. But when they they take these broken pieces of pottery, and they, it's a whole process of them shaving it down, and they they fill the cracks up with valuable like liquid gold or silver liqueur, precious metals go into the cracks. And I know you guys may have seen that art that has like the cracks mm -hmm. in the, and it actually, when the process is done, the vase becomes a masterpiece because there's so much work that goes into this. 
So I said, God was speaking to me when I was looking at that, and he was like, that's what happens with my kids, with my children. They get broken by sin, and then when they come back to me, I'm able to fill them again, make them whole, and make them a masterpiece. So, so just because you have broken cracks or pieces that are, it doesn't even matter. If you get lined up with God, he can like fill you up and make you a masterpiece, make you better than what you ever was at the beginning. He created you at the beginning. You were good at the beginning, but crack, come back. Once you go through the process, he can make you whole again and make you so much better. So that's that's not in my notes, but <laughs> but that's what I was going to share with you if I would have sang, sang that song. So um, I just said he wants to give you blessings exceedingly and abundantly more than what you could ask or think. So you couldn't even think about all the things. I know there's been times where God blesses me and it just blows my mind like, wow, God, I thought it was going to be this. And it's like so much better. And he, he gave me just something out of the blue that I did, couldn't even imagine that I would have. And so that's a reminder. If you put him first, he wants to do that. He wants to begin. So put him first. That's the thing. Put him first and everything else will line up. Um, sometimes when you're being made well, you don't even recognize the places that you need to be healed. Have you ever experienced that? And and so I'm gonna give you a little example of when I had this. Uh, it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing, but uh, I'm, I'm I guess I'm seeing myself hobbling around. Um, I actually a few years back I had uh, it's like 2019. I had broken my ankle, and um, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I didn't even know at first that I had did it. I was still trying to like hold on to things. Up. Then I was like, okay, no, something's wrong here. I can't even put weight on it. And so um, in the process of healing, first of all, you never realize how much you miss things until you can't do it. I mean, I think about the bags and stuff I carry around. You can't do that when you're on crutches. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so difficult. So navigating around that, but I never realized how in the process, so I, I say in here that um, when you're going through this process that you may be going through even right now and you're working on yourself, working your, on getting yourself better, you may not know um, all that needs to be healed until you start feeling those aches and pains in other places. And I say that because when I was, when my ankle was hurt, it's like, one of the examples is when I was walking on the crutches and I was putting more of my weight on that, I didn't even realize she's shaking her head like yes, yeah, but, yeah, I didn't even realize all of a sudden under my arms hurt from yes. when I was on the crutches. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the pain. And 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 then you put more weight on one leg and this then that yes. one starts hurting you like, oh my goodness. But it's all of, it's all in the process to heal you completely. Mm -hmm. You gotta get some pains in some other places that you're trying to. And I was yeah. like, oh my goodness! And I didn't realize how much other things were gonna be affected by this mm -hmm. one part, not me not being able to be whole in that one area. And I was like, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! And then when I when I started healing and I got off the crutches and I had the boot. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you guys, I started getting really good in that boot. <laughs> so I was like walking around fast so, and the doctor said, take the boot off. And they were saying, wear a brace every day. And I'm thinking, I feel pretty good in this boot. Like I, you know, I don't really even need it. Man, when I took that boot off, I realized, oh, it's still tender. <laughs> it's still, I need that brace of support. Because the boot was there for a while yeah. to support me for a, a, a season of that process of healing. Mm -hmm. But when I took it off, I felt that it, I still had some pain there. Mm -hmm. I still had some healing to go. Mm -hmm. So in your process of what, you know, as you're going through this program, you're going to feel that. But guess what? God is, he's doing all these things to completely heal you. It's, it's a process and um, and a learning one and a learning yeah. process mm -hmm. and it, it taught me something I was like man uh, but I was glad I wasn't 
back where I, I was, yeah. where, you know, and at night we had a good gift to go to the bathroom, and they all crutches at you, and like, oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I had progressed to the booth, mm -hmm. but even that, and then when I even was in the brace, I was still like, okay, God, I, I'm thankful and grateful yeah. that I have more mobility, but, you know, I want to be whole again. Right. And, it, and it really does, you have to go through some things to get back whole again. I bet he taught you to be very uh, patient, patient and positive. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But I tell you. Yeah. Everything she just said, I told you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he talks to you. Praise God. And he teaches you to improvise because I remember I was in an office where, you know, I'm only taking my boss coffee. I was using my chair as a wheelchair like a around and, and, you know, just you, yeah. you, you learn to improvise. But in the process of becoming whole, in the process of being made well. And so, um, I just want to say that, that when you're in those pressure places and you have pain that's unexpected, just know that you can be healed. God wants to heal you and he wants to, your complete healing. So don't give up in those times where you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know this is ever gonna, you know, this pain is gonna still be here or ever gonna, no, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a process to get to that point. So number two, prepare to do the work. <laughs> this one. Prepare to do the work. So start preparing. Um, I remember, think about it. If you don't prepare, you won't be ready when your blessings come. You won't be ready. Because I think back on that, if, if I wouldn't have been preparing um, or allowing God to prepare me, I wouldn't have been ready when my the blessing of uh, my, my other job on the worship director at Oak and I do worship there but if I wouldn't have went through the things that I went through I wouldn't have been ready for that when it came along so the things that you're learning and grow the things that you're doing now is preparing you for what you're going to need and so be be ready to to do the work be ready to um you know get disciplined and and go through the process learn all you need to learn work hard, you know, help each other. If there's a part, if there's something you're, you know, somebody's needing. Um, and, you know, you have to make sacrifices too. It, it's not gonna be all just, you know. Anytime when I, and I, and I look at the people that, I, I forgot where I was looking at, it was something about uh, people that had been very successful in business. They were like, there was times when I wasn't able to hang out with my friends or there wasn't times I was able to do this because I was I was focused on getting better, focused on what I was being called to do and I was laser focused on that. And I really I really didn't get let things distract me. And that's what you have to do when you're you being is preparing yourself. You have to I had seen this somewhere you have to decide what kind of life you want. And then you have to say no to everything else. You really do. Anything that doesn't match what you're wanting, you have to say no to that. You have to say, no, I'm not doing that because that's going to take me further away from where I need to be. <clears throat> that's going to keep me from doing this <laughs> if I do that. So Today, you just, can I say something? Yeah. Today I had, I almost thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. I was I was rearranging my room today, but I had God on my mind all day, but he was on this side of my mind, and I had a thought on this side, and I got tired, so I said, well, and I, I'm a smoker, so I said, I'm going to go outside and have a cigarette and just look at, see if my squirrels are around or something and get my mind off of some stuff that was starting to compile me, okay, and so I went outside. And out of nowhere, it, it just hit me. I couldn't breathe. I, I started shaking real bad. I, I like to never made it in the back door. Oh, I was hmm. climbing up the stairs. I, I was scared. I was by myself. So I called my friend Pam. And she goes, just slow down, Melody. Slow down. Now I know what it was. Because my mind was on something, but it was off of God at times. Yeah. And God was trying to get my attention. I do feel that now. Yeah. And he just took it a little further than what it usually does. Yeah. 
And instead of me dropping to my knees and praying, I was looking at man for help. And God said, I'm right here. Yeah, I, you, I'm trying to tell you something. And we could go to everybody else, but it's funny how we forget to go to God first. Yeah. We're like, oh, no, calling your friend. Oh, you know, and, and not saying that friends can't sometimes, right. if you're just venting or something, but we should be going to him first. Exactly. We go to him sometimes last, and that's like, oh, if I would have just went here first, he would have, like, gave me the answer of why. Yeah. And that, pray, pray about that, because yeah. that could have been an encounter, an incident in that moment, then maybe God's telling you something. Right. Maybe even, and, and, and not, I'm not trying to say, but maybe even something like with your health, maybe saying, I don't want you there. Right. So, but I don't know. Her, her grandpa hung, I, my sister bought me a beautiful Jesus picture, and I got the beautiful frame from the grocery store, and I, I hung it above my head. And she said, now, when you're not thinking or you're doing wrong, it's going to fall and hit you in the head. That way he knows. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so I told her, Grandpa, and he said, I'll put the screw in a little tighter. No. <laughs> That's and not thought, the point. No, no, like, no, no. All I do is just drop on my head. Please, you don't have to do that to me no more. <laughs> and that's how he does it. If you, if you have your ears open to hear him, he, he, won't, he won't have to do all that. But if you don't, he will stop you yeah. right in the midst of where you are and he will get your attention yeah. let me and just he, say that truly it made me stop thinking of, of everything like that all at once yes. and i think that's what I, I just started thinking of all the troubles and stuff and yeah. so i had to stop and regroup and run to him first when that you know when something like that happens run to him first because yeah. he's so good he says cast all your cares on me yeah and, and it, it just lifts the load off of you to know that you have someone who can always listen to you no matter can use in the midnight hour and you can call on them. So um yeah that that's that's really so that's the second point. Make make sure you might have to make sacrifices, you might have to you know get plugged into him, focus on him, focus on God, whatever you know, um I have something to but, say. Oh yes. Go ahead. I have some spiritual, you know, awareness and connection with God, like through my family, through my uncle, through my mom, you know, some things that, you know, have kind of recently come up. And I remember like my family coming up and talking about, you know, well, you know, there's this emergency that's happening. And I really felt like, you know, that was, you know, a moment to really, again, connect with that spirituality and, you know, and having that same kind of experience has really come up for me over and over again. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and God God um, does that. He uses, he can use anything. He can use people, experiences to allow us to grow closer to him and to help the people we love as we're helping ourselves. Because it's not one dimensional. He's wanting to heal us, but as we become whole, we're helping others that may need help get made, become whole as well. Because you can go to someone and say, hey, you know, maybe you're needing something in this area, and you're like, maybe I can help you with that. Maybe, maybe it's, in, you know, maybe you, you, you love to pray, or maybe, you know, this other person, they're good with, I'm just saying finance or something. God will send every person that you need in your life to help you with different areas. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have issues with trust or, you know, family issues. God can help you in every single area. And, and I, so d doing the work, um, staying plugged into God, well, I always say working smarter and not harder, but the smarter comes from the wisdom of God. A lot of people they throw that out there but I really have seen on my own personal journey that that working smarter not harder mm -hmm. is being plugged into God <laughs> that's where my wisdom comes from thinking straight yes thinking mm -hmm. and I would say think, think, so I not doing it on your own you don't have to do things on your own sometimes we make things hard um, and, and let me just say this we make things hard for ourselves and then guess what happens we get discouraged mm -hmm. When it doesn't happen when really i encourage you to do it with god keep your focus on god because guess what he will give you wisdom on how to do it and it won't be such a hard journey we, we, yeah we're trying to do it our own way I, you know yeah as i said you know i, I want to be a nurse or something like that and you're trying to do it in your own strength and really that 
statement of working <laughs> smarter, not harder, to me, I say godly wisdom. Yeah. Getting it from the source, which is God. It, it, so just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, number three, choose gratitude instead of... How did I miss number two? Oh, work... Oh, that's prepare to work hard? Okay, prepare to so, work. So sorry. Now sorry. I heard the whole conversation. <laughs> uh, you're like, how did I <laughs> And I'll try, try to speed this along. Number three is choose gratitude instead of an attitude. Mm. I'll say a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you might say, okay, what does that have to do with living well? Wait a minute. Um, well, a lot of things, because your attitude, it really can affect how you feel. If, 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 you know, the goodness of God, first of all, let me just say the goodness of God is very attractive. And when, when you come in, I know people, when certain people, when they walk in the room, their, their, their spirit is so good. It's like, wow, you know, you or you feel uplifted. Every time that person walks into the room, it just makes me feel better. That's the spirit of God living in the inside of that person. And so when, and the same happens with bad attitudes. If somebody comes in with a foul attitude or they're, they're mean, they're rude, and you're just like, oh person just brings me down or I just you know and the thing about it is and there's some people that they're not even trying to have a, a down attitude it's just like maybe they're depressed maybe they're going through something you never know what someone's going through and they're just kind of like just to themselves a person who has a good attitude about something can really bring out something good maybe from that person you know you never know but having the right attitude it can affect your relationships it can affect your mood your movement your mind your creativity your perspective because a bad attitude and wrong attitude can really sometimes really kick your perspective wrong um and so we want to make sure that we are having a good attitude. And I was, I was talking with my sister about this the other day, and we were talking about um, she had read in a uh, one of Joyce Meyer's um, kind of like a daily devotional about complaining being a sin. And we were we were talking about that, and I was like, complaining being a sin. Well, you know what? When I think thought about this now. She didn't say this in her devotional, but God just took it further in my mind. <laughs> I was thinking about the children of Israel when they got delivered, and because you guys all know God delivered them, or you know, delivered them from from the you had the whole Red Sea, just delivered them from Pharaoh and being in Egypt, and they were in bondage and slavery. God delivered them. They saw all these miracles, but guess what? It's the they complained and murmured. And what did that do? That led them to being uh, 40 years <laughs> in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, even when God was feeding them manna, they still was complaining. And and just all this corruption and just... <laughs> and nothing good. And guess what it ultimately ended to? Most of them did not get to go into the promised land. So they missed out on their promise. Mm -hmm. They missed out on them. They're getting to see the promised land. And and how unfortunate is that <clears throat> when yeah. God has done all these great things and because of their attitudes, mm -hmm. they, they, first of all, walk 40 years in the wilderness on like a 12-day trip, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's like, we're, and, yeah. and you miss out on the promised land. Mm -hmm. All these promises you heard about, oh, land flowing of milk and honey, you didn't get to see any of it. Mm -hmm. You didn't walk in your purpose. You didn't do anything because you were having a bad attitude yep. and not grateful. That's why I say gratitude, not grateful. Right. It does not take much to be grateful and thankful for the things that you're getting in your lives that, we don't deserve salvation, but God is so good that he gave it to us. And we should be thankful and grateful for all these things. So I literally want to just 
change your perspective about that your attitude has a big a big part uh, to do with your well-being. And so let me let me move along to the fourth. Uh, know who you are. Um, I believe this is a very very important one. Knowing um, your identity in Christ. Knowing that. Um, is a major part of you becoming whole and walking in your wellness to living well knowing um, that God's word what his word says about you when you believe what God says about you it makes all the difference in the world when I begin to believe like what God was saying about me oh wow I am fearfully and wonderfully made I how he said I can do this the things that looked impossible I started seeing oh well maybe it is possible because God says I can do all things in him so when you start believing what the word of God says about you uh, I, I mean truly believe because there was a time when I remember hearing people speak into my life and I mean tell me things and I was like I didn't see it yet he was like mm -hmm. I had people saying, oh, you're, I feel like you're going to do this, 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 and I couldn't see that yet. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. you know, and I was getting excited about it, but I was like, I didn't truly believe that I was worthy of that. Um, but when, when we feel that we have no value, we have to begin to see how valuable we are to God. And so you have to really think about that. Do I really believe I'm chosen? special do I feel like I'm beautiful unique like all these things that God says about us you have to realize if you are God's child you are worthy because he made you worthy you are worthy. I feel all those things <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you are worthy because he, yeah, he's made you worthy so um so that that's the, the most part that believing mm -hmm. You have to remember and speak, even if you can speak that life into yourself, read his words. You know, you have to remember. I remember writing these things down in my journal, what people had said, mm -hmm. and just but I realized later I didn't really believe it. You know, I heard people say, Oh, you're gonna do this, mm -hmm. oh, you're gonna, and I'm like, different settings. I'm at a conference and a woman spoke over my life, and I was like, receiving it, and I'm like, oh, and I just was telling like my mother and my sister you know, she said I'm going to do this and I'm like, but I really didn't believe it because you know why I hadn't started doing the work for it like God had told me to start learning the guitar years before I actually did it <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there and I didn't I, when you start believing truly what God says you will start taking the steps for it and it's amazing how when I finally, I think I probably got my guitar like 2006 or seven, and I picked it up and I got it for Christmas. I kind of played it for a couple months and then when I felt like it was too hard, I put it in the corner <laughs> and it was there. And I, it wasn't until years later that, and, and this actually happened more like my grandpa, I remember my grandfather's funeral, uh, they had asked me to sing his eyes on Sparrow because that's one of his favorite songs. And I remember being in, and what happened was the, it was an older church. They couldn't get the, the CD player to play. The, I was singing with a crack. And in the midst of that, I'm like this. And they're thinking I'm getting emotional, which I was. It, it, it was so I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I remember God speaking to me right then and saying, that is why you need to learn how to play. And I said, I hear you, Lord. But guess what God did? He had someone in the audience that knew how to play. And I was thinking, they was like, we have someone here to play for you. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Because if I haven't practiced with somebody, you're like, I don't know if this is going to go. The, the gentleman played for me like we had practiced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, even when we don't do our part and we don't do work, God still, he covered me. He didn't let me fall. He caught me right where I was at. And he showed up and didn't let me 
look crazy, he allowed me to, mm -hmm. to be able to sing the song playing, and the guy followed me all the way. But after that, it's when I got serious about, I heard God in that weird moment, in that one little moment where nobody else knew, but I knew what I was supposed to be doing and I hadn't done it. Right. Um, and I had every excuse in the book of why I wasn't doing it. <laughs> Lord, my fingers are too fat, they're too short, they're this, they're that, I can't do that. No, there's no excuse. If I told you to do it, and then it, I realized once I was obedient and did that, guess what? The songs that God gives me, my original songs, I realized nobody else would have been able to play that. If you go out somewhere, nobody's going to know your music. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's a popular song. I no, you, you've got to, you need to learn how to play so that you can do what I call you to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So believing who you are, knowing who you are in Christ, um, and I, I really, <coughs> God had to do that and show that to me for me to start knowing who I was in him and not being afraid right. to just that, sit. That's another thing that we need to know, too, and, and for us to, I mean, that you're really right and close with God is when if you're prayed over or um, you are, God's got a word for you. And he tells you, I, I, I see you, I see your future. I see what you're going to be. God's going to use you. If we really believe that, yes. and we, we really, because I was spoke over, and I, I believe that it can happen because I, I, I used to never talk in straight senses and say the things that I can say now today, but I can really make sense out of a lot of stuff. And so it does happen. It, it is true. It and, does and it's a pro it is, it's a process mm -hmm. of you lining your life up and mm -hmm. living well and living in worship, but it's a process for him to get that out of you. Exactly. He wants you to be lined up because he's not gonna allow you to do some of these great things if, if you're still living in a not well life. You know what I mean? But we, so, we will we can we will, we we're humans and oh, God yeah. knows that. We still claim us, he will always play us clear up till the day he comes, but and we we will fall, we may fall. But he's there to pick us up. Just don't stay down when you fall. Yeah. Learn from that falling. And also know that when the, the devil is the father of lies, he loves to make you stay in condemnation. Exactly. Oh, you you were this. You were that. You can't go. They're not going to receive you to speak my word or whatever, you know, or speak. They're going to they're gonna speak right. God's word. They're going to. The devil will make you think that you're not worthy. He right. will make you think that. God can't use you as a vessel. Mm -hmm. It will make you doubt it. He will make you think, oh, you're never going to do anything good. You, you know, and so we have to really know who we are in Christ to be able okay. to live that whole life and be like, no, God healed me. This is who I am now. That was my past. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this now. I'm you know, living for God. I, I put the part in here about we're, if we know his truth that we're not worthy of God's blessings, but it's just like a child. Like when I have, when I have, when my son was little, he's done nothing to earn what I'm giving him. I mean, you know, and you know, like this is, he's my child, and I'm giving him, you know, presents and this and that, just just the normal things, but things above even, just. But because he's my child, and I love him, I'm giving that to him. That's what God does with us, right? And, but then of course, even as the, like you said, as you're, as you're growing along, then he, he's wanting you to also help someone else. Mm -hmm. Because like now that my son's, you know, older, right. now he can give back, you right. know what I mean? So that's what God really expects from us. We don't deserve anything that we have or that we're getting. My pastor so, used to tell me that I lived a journey of a life. I have to live, I have to walk in that shoe before I can talk about it. Yeah. And I believe that very very seriously yeah you know if i don't know nothing about what you went through i can't help you yeah I, he I, I i can't relate to what I, he blesses us to be a blessing yeah mm -hmm. he didn't give you the gifts and the things that you have just for you to just hold on to he blesses you to be a blessing like you said he wants you to speak there are some words that he's wanting to give you to be able to share to someone else right. but you, you you know he's getting you to that place I'm and it will happen learning. yeah you're I'm still, still falling but i still learn you know i bet uh, you're falling but he catches you yeah because when you're when you are 
living your lifestyle that's under worship. It, we're not perfect. We're going to fall. We're going to have things where we're not feeling like we're measuring up. But I'll never be a saint. Yeah. I'm all, I'll wake up every day as a saint, but I can pray about it. We're, you know? we're all sinners saved by grace. There we fall less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and not so far. Yeah, and so and we're all sinners saved by grace, and now I thank God for that. When I began to know who I was, I start seeing those doubts and those fears like diminish away in some areas. And I and I will tell y'all, there, there's still times I'm fearful, like oh, I don't know if I got this, but it's just a a, a new area He put me in, and it's new. It's Him stretching me. It's Him saying. Come on, I want you to have more. Change. Okay. More change. It doesn't mean so we're we're in we're in that process. And so let me give you this last one so that um, I missed four. Oh, that was oh four was um <laughs> no who you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Know who you are. Know and who you are. Right. Yes. Um I yeah. You freedom's gonna come in. That's when your freedom's gonna really come. Right. Like, when you know who you are in Christ. And that's a huge part of your wellness. So the last one is we must want to be well. We must want to be well. Um, <clears throat> you know, have you given God your yes? Have you surrendered to him? We have to want it. God doesn't force us. He 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 freely gives us the gift that we have to accept. Mm -hmm. That's sure. I mean. And so no one can make you... Um, want to be well or live a life of wellness you have to want it and even if you don't believe you can have it begin to pray and ask God say God oh, cover my mind I want to live a life that is well I want to be whole I, I want to I be able to, to love on others I want to be able to have good relationships. I want to be able and watch what that God will do. If you pray that prayer and you really mean it and you begin to line your life up with God, I mean, um, He will He will line you up of wherever else you are needing to go. And I, I have this little thing that I saw. Um, it's, I saw this on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere, but I thought it was really good. So I thought I'm going to share it with the ladies. It said, and I'm going to, it says your ministry, and I added in uh, life, <laughs> but your ministry is found where, you, where you've been broken, but your testimony is found where you've been restored. Yes. Mm -hmm. So your ministry, your life, it is found where you've been broken. But your testimony is found where you've been restored. So, so um, there's going to be so many testimonies around this table of you guys sharing how grow has helped you become restored, overcoming women. And I just want to encourage you all. And so th this is the end of it. I want to encourage you all um, to let God. Um, in those places where you want to, where you desire to be, where you want to be, where you want to flourish or thrive and be well, let allow God to um, begin to work on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just take those tips, and I hope that something that was said helped somebody, but just know that um, the way that you get to wellness, I will believe, is a lifestyle of worship. And worship is in everything you do, in everything you do. Um, make God first in the center, and you just will be amazed at what God's going to do. Awesome. So that's what I have. <laughs> I think we have some surprises for the ladies. We do. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Love, love on you guys.